Hey everybody, my name is Joanna Harbin and I will be the lead Cape Town Program Director this summer. This will actually be my fifth summer in a row in Cape Town and all of my friends and family give me a hard time about wouldn't I rather go somewhere else or go to Greece or Ecuador or somewhere else with Global Lead. But honestly, there is no place I'd rather spend five weeks this summer. It is the most amazing city in the world and I'm so glad that each of you will be joining me. As you guys watch this video, jot down any notes or questions that you have and then email them to me at capetown at globalleadprogram.org by tomorrow at midnight. And on Wednesday, I'll post a video that answers all of your questions um, so that you guys all feel completely prepared to spend five weeks with me this summer in Cape Town. By now, you all should have watched the general Global Lead video with Courtney, and hopefully that gave you an idea about health and safety abroad. And now what I want to do is dive into the details of Cape Town. In this video, we're going to go over the accommodations, the itinerary for each week, program and community groups, spending money, packing, communication abroad, and then I'm going to um, follow up with frequently asked questions. This summer, we will have an amazing staff on the ground in Cape Town. I will be the lead program director. Dr. Kendra King Momin will be our lead academic professor. She's a professor at Oglethorpe and is an expert on leadership, is absolutely phenomenal. We're gonna have two teaching assistants, Rob and Jill, and then we'll have two global lead interns, Lincoln and Pierce. Each of us is excited and ready to meet you guys on the ground and get to know you this summer. I know most of you guys have never been to South Africa, and actually this is the first time for most of you guys to visit the African continent, so I want to give you some idea of what to expect about the city of Cape Town in general. It is an absolutely beautiful city. It's situated right on a lagoon with Table Mountain in the background. So every single day you'll wake up in our apartments and you will look over the beach out at the water and see the city of Cape Town nestled between these three huge mountains and Table Mountain as the backdrop. It is one of the top adventure capitals of the world. There's surfing, there's safari, um, there's shark cage diving. Any type of adventure you want to do, you'll find it in Cape Town. What's the most amazing about Cape Town though is that there's an awesome opportunity for service. So while the city of Cape Town is incredibly cosmopolitan and has awesome restaurants and food and shopping, just miles outside of the city there are millions of people still living in extreme poverty and we're going to have the opportunity to get into the townships, get to know the people and make a difference while we're there. Every single week we'll have an entirely different focus. Um, so it will make the time fly by. The very first week is all about orientation and getting you guys set up to have the greatest experience in Cape Town. The very first day we'll have a city tour so you'll get your bearings for the city and then we'll finish up with an awesome cultural dinner that night. The next day we'll have a panel where you'll get to hear from a diverse group that have had totally different experiences in South Africa um, and that will give you an overview of the history from different points of view. Wednesday we'll have a township tour and hear about Amy Beale Foundation which is doing incredible things in the city. We'll also be focusing on leadership models and strengths during that very first week so you'll jump right into the curriculum. Week two will be our education week and this is all experiential education. So not only will we visit Robben Island where Nelson Mandela spent 27 years as a political prisoner which is actually right off the coast of Cape Town, we'll also go to the vineyards, we'll go to Cape Point, we'll go to Boulders Beach where they have African penguins and yes they look just as cute as they do in Happy Feet. And we will wrap up and get you guys situated to split into your program groups on week three. Week three and week four, we will actually split the entire program into uh, two groups. These are your program groups, which I'll talk about a little bit later. One group will dive headfirst into service week. This is absolutely my favorite week of the program. We're gonna get to go to Sir Lowry's Pass, which is a community about 45 minutes outside of the city. This is the same community we've worked with for the past five years. So now I've gotten to know all of the families, all of the kids, the school, the churches. Um, it's just an amazing place to spend our time in Cape Town. You guys are gonna get to meet Miss Cheryl and her daughter Candy and their baby Courtney. Um, that's our main family in Cape Town um, and they will make sure that we're set up to have the most amazing time in the community. We will run after school programs for kids focused on arts, we'll do sports, we'll do music, dance, so anything that you're passionate about, you're gonna get to help bring that to this community. Literally, there is no time in Solaris Pass that is exciting and as happy as the time that Global Lead comes. They wait for us all year, and the first time we pull into that community in our bus, you'll see the kids and the moms and the families coming out of their houses because they're so excited for us to be back.
Global Lead Service is all about getting to know the people, so you'll be learning just as much from them as you'll be teaching. It's just an incredible week to really get outside of your comfort zone and make a difference in the local community. While one group is doing service, the other group will set out on the garden route, and this is our adventure week. Cape Town, like I mentioned, is the adventure capital of the world, and this week will not disappoint you. You'll get to do anything from Shark Cage Dive, where they film Discovery Channel Shark Week every single year. You will go on safari, we'll go to an elephant sanctuary, we'll get up close and personal with the most amazing creatures in the world. You'll go caving, you'll go on hikes. Every single day is entirely different, and they are full of so much adventure. You're really gonna get to connect with the community along the way as well, as you're traveling up the coast of South Africa. Each night during this week, we'll actually be staying at a local hostel. It's a beachfront hostel where they'll have music and food, um, and it's just an amazing time to get around the campfire and get to bond with your program group. During the last week, everybody will be back in Cape Town at Sunstays Lagoon Beach Apartments, and we will kind of wrap everything up. You'll take the culmination of four weeks of incredible but very different experiences and figure out what does this mean for me when I'm back at home. Application is everything. We will revisit the community one last time. We'll talk about a personal vision for your life. And on the very last day, we'll have a final celebration and final dinner with the entire program. You guys should have already looked through your manual, which has a lot of the details for the Cape Town program. And one thing that you'll notice are what's called community groups and program groups. And you're probably wondering, what the heck are these? So program groups are the groups that you will do your service with and your adventure with and a lot of the different tours in Cape Town. We will have the Bafana Bafanas and the Springboks. Springboks are the national rugby team. If you haven't already watched Invictus, you need to watch it before you go and you'll have some idea about how big rugby is in South Africa. Bafana Bafana is the national soccer team and hopefully you guys all watched the last World Cup because it was actually hosted in South Africa and there was a game played in Cape Town. Some of you guys will be representing for the Springboks and some of you will be representing for Bafana Bafana. This is the group that you will be rotating through with activities, tours, service, and adventure. Our program will also be divided into community groups. Community groups are groups of about seven or eight, and I've tried really hard to try to make sure that no one knows anyone else in their community group. So whether you know five people coming with you to Cape Town or if you know no one, everyone will be outside of their comfort zone on day one with their community groups. You guys will do scavenger hunts together, you'll do small group discussions, um, and you'll get to serve in the local community. This is just a way to make what is a pretty big program feel a lot smaller. One of the biggest questions that students always have is how much money should I bring with me? The best way to figure this out is to just take into consideration all of the things that are already covered um, and provided with the LEAD Cape Town program and then use the budgeting tools in your program manual and found on the website to decide how much you personally think you'll spend abroad. So a few of the activities that are included, shark cage diving, the safari game drives, elephant sanctuary, trip to the Congo caves, the trip to the winelands, the tour of Robin Island, the tour of Cape Point, Boulders Beach, a trip to Table Mountain, and lots of museums in Cape Town. Breakfast will also be provided Monday through Friday and we'll have group dinners on Sunday. A few of the things that aren't included that you should be aware of, internet in the hotel, which we will tell you about on the very first day, how to purchase it and how to gauge how much you're going to use, phone calls, stationery, Taxis to non-program events with Ish, who you'll meet on day one. Independent outings or things that you choose to do on your own during your free time. Gifts and souvenirs. And any additional adventure activities that you should choose to do. We actually have a list of optional adventures that you can sign up for through Cape Extreme listed on the website and in your program manual so you'll get a better gauge of which ones you might want to take on and how much money you'll need for each of those activities. A few ways that I suggest that you guys save. One, try to eat out less than once a day. There's some students who just really want to take advantage of all the amazing food that Cape Town has to offer, um, but you will have a full kitchen and you can grocery shop for very, very cheap and cook meals with your friends um, and your roommates. Another opportunity is to just take advantage of all the things that we have planned for you. Um, there'll be a lot of things you can do on your own, but you'll save money by experiencing Cape Town with Global Lead. If you do choose to do something on your own and you'll need a taxi, try to rally a group with you. We'll have almost 100 students in Cape Town, so there'll always be someone who wants to join you on any activity. Lastly, just make a plan. Sit down, talk to your parents, talk to your friends, and figure out how much you think you'll honestly spend in Cape Town. 
it varies entirely by student. There are some students who are very money conscious and can save while they're there, and there are students who spend a lot. So it's completely up to the student, and I would be happy to help you guys with the budgeting process. Students always want to know what to pack. There is a full detailed list of things to pack located in your program manual. You can also find it on our website under the accepted student content. A few things to note. You need to check with your airline to see how many bags you can check and make sure you're aware of the weight restrictions. Every year we have the Cape Town luggage reshuffle in the airport and you don't want to be moving things from uh, suitcase to suitcase. So make sure as you're packing that you bring only the things that you need. Make sure you also bring at least one carry-on suitcase that you can take on the garden route during Adventure Week. You're not going to lug your entire suitcase with you, so bring something smaller that you can pack in. Leave all valuables at home. If it's an heirloom or something you cannot live without, do not bring it with you to Cape Town. Just know that it is actually the fall moving into winter in the Southern Hemisphere, so bring clothes for all kinds of seasons. You can have days that are sunny and 70, and then there'll be days where it's very rainy and in the 50s. People always want to know if they should bring just casual clothes or fancy clothes or what in between. Um, I would say to definitely bring clothes for serving and adventure week that are more casual and athletic, but you also probably want to bring a few outfits that are a little bit dressier because there are nice restaurants in Cape Town and for our very first dinner and very last dinner, um, girls usually wear dresses or something a little bit more formal with heels and guys will be wearing slacks. Since you will be gone for five weeks, you're probably wondering how you're going to be able to stay in contact with friends and family at home. First of all, you will have internet in the Lagoon Beach apartments, but with almost 100 people trying to Facebook, Skype, or you know, watch YouTube videos, it can actually be pretty slow. So just be aware you're not in the States, you don't have streaming fast internet, but you will have access to email. You will be able to upload videos and pictures to Facebook um, and stay in contact with people at home that way. The number one thing that I would recommend in order to stay in touch with people at home is to rent a cell phone through Global Lead. Number one, it's great for safety. If you have a local cell phone on you, um, if in any situation, you know you'll be able to directly reach me, your roommates, Ishmael, who will be coordinating transportation and taxis, um, or any local authorities. So it's really great for safety reasons. Second of all, it's just convenient for you know, staying in touch with your roommates, for planning additional activities, um, for calling taxis, it just is helpful. A lot of students do talk to Verizon and AT&T about getting international plans, but what I can tell you is that the service is not entirely reliable and you will rack up a lot of charges. With Globally, through Vodacom, you can rent a phone for $50 um, and that will actually give you entirely free incoming calls, locally or internationally. The only cost that you should be aware of is when you're making outgoing calls or sending text messages. A detailed list of the prices are located also in your program manual and online. Now I want to wrap up with a few frequently asked questions. Number one, you will need a South African adapter. A lot of people will go to Brookstone or stores in the States or maybe even order them online and what we found is they don't always work. Um, you can actually get the adapters on the ground in Cape Town or order a care package through Global Lead and you'll have two adapters there waiting for you when you arrive. Every single apartment will either have a washer and dryer or a dishwasher. But what's great is that you'll make friends with the apartments next door. So if you need to do laundry, you will have a washing machine and dryer available to you. But you can also take your laundry down to the front desk and they will ship it off and it will come back folded and nicely done if you don't want to deal with doing laundry yourself. Girls, don't even bring hair dryers with you. On the very first day of the program, we're always walking around the apartments and we start to smell what smells like smoke or burning hair. And it's because everyone brings their nice, fancy hair straighteners and hair dryers with them and the voltage is just too much for South Africa. So I would leave those at home and on the first day when you have your apartment there, you guys can go out together and buy a very cheap hair dryer or straightener and just share it among you in the apartment and I promise that this will work much better than bringing your fancy chi or hair dryers from home. They will bust on day one. The water is very safe to drink in Cape Town. We won't be traveling to any malaria zones or typhoid, typhoid zones. We do recommend that you go to your local travel clinic or see your doctor to see if there are any immunizations or things that you should get, um, but you won't need typhoid or malaria medicine. That wraps up our Cape Town specific orientation. If you guys still have questions or concerns, please email me anytime before tomorrow at midnight, capetown at globallyprogram.org, and I will answer any question that you have. We'll post a follow-up video on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to meeting each and every one of you and having the most amazing five weeks in Cape Town, South Africa.